of you joining us on FCF Online. God is so good, amen? Amen. Come on, we're here to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Let's sing this together. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this. I love you.
says it's because of the Lord's great love that we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Just want to encourage you this morning, just push every distraction aside. This is a time for you to pour your heart out to the Lord. He cares for you. He loves you. He's drawing you deeper into his presence. Let's not rush past this moment.
this morning. church. God, just as that song we sang, we, we recognize we're caught up in a holy moment right now. When we gather like this on a Sunday morning as your church, your people, something holy and special is happening and we sense it. We sense your presence and God, it's our desire to draw near to you. And I know that's your heart. You are here wanting, waiting for us, each one. So God, may our hearts be hearts that want to move closer and closer to you. And, and then this time, as Pastor Pete brings your message today, your word, God, may our hearts and our minds be wide open to receive what you have for us. And even more so, God, that we would just come into a deeper understanding of who you are and this written revelation, your word that you've given to us. So have your way in us, Lord, we pray at this time, in this holy moment, in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Yeah. You can go ahead and take a seat and say hello to somebody sitting nearby. Give them a fist bump or a handshake or a hug or a wave or whatever option. You have many options there. We want to welcome all of you this morning, whether you're in person or online. Uh, so good to be worshiping with you this morning. I want to welcome some gals from Messiah College down here. So excited. Got to meet them in the bathroom. It's a great place. It's a, lot, it's a big bathroom, so we can do a lot of socializing there. So, so good to be with you today. Um, if this is your first time here at FCF, we would love uh, just to know that you're here with us. And the way you can let us know is by filling out our Connect card. That's either on the back of your program, or if you're online, you can go to fcfchurch.com. Just tap the Connect button. We'd really appreciate it. it let's us know that you're here today. So we have all kinds of uh, just amazing things that are happening on a regular basis in our care ministry. So many ways that our care ministry and the teams reach out to help various people. 
And but before we do that, what you may not know, how many of y'all love Pastor Kim? What are they supposed to say? How are they, so, are they, going, are they going to say? Your time, your time is over. <laughs> just a few of them like you, as you can just tell. I think this is her actual birthday today. She, tur she turned 40 years old today. So, Jesse, why don't we sing it? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Kim. Happy birthday to you. I just stand here. It's important that you hold all of this while you talk, though. Okay. You gotta keep. Keep going okay. and farther forward into the light right there. <laughs> Thank you. This is not a surprise because it's the second service. So we did this once. Nevertheless, I am just as grateful. So thank you for these. Thank you, everyone. So I was telling you about our wonderful care ministry. Pastor Chris, our care ministry pastor, is going to tell you some details about some things that we've got going on. On your chair when you first came in, there's this little piece of paper if you want to grab it. There are many things that you probably did to get ready for this morning. So some of you probably took showers, you brushed your teeth, you shaved, you put on deodorant. Well, imagine how that would be if you didn't have the necessary hygiene products. So the Allen P. Linton Shelter is in dire need of travel size hygiene products. So if that's something that you are able to contribute next week in the lobby, we're gonna have boxes out there. You can just go ahead and drop those items off and we thank you so much for that. Underneath that is our Tuesday's Meals with a Mission. If you like to cook, you can sign up to bring a casserole, vegetables, cookies, and if you don't cook, that's okay. We've got items for you. We've got water, fresh fruit, and granola bars. So if you're able to sign up and bring part of that meal, the way that you do that is listed at the bottom of the paper as well. On the other side is our bereavement team are offering two special events. The first one is this coming Saturday. It's our loss of a spouse luncheon. We're gonna provide lunch, watch a video, and then we're gonna have a small group discussion. So go ahead and check out the information on that. And then the second one is surviving the holidays. So if you've lost someone and you're not sure how you're gonna navigate Thanksgiving and Christmas, this is an event for you. We're gonna serve you breakfast, Again, watch a video, and then we're going to have a small group discussion. These are both free. We just ask that you register on the FCF Church app or go to fcfchurch.com and look for them under events. Thank you. We give it up for Pastor Chris and our amazing care ministry and all the teams and all that they are continually doing in our community and in our church. We're so grateful. So, you know, Pastor Chris has laid out some just great opportunities to do good, to help others. Listen to these words. The Apostle Paul wrote to his, his uh, young pastor, Timothy, who he was mentoring, and he tells Timothy to tell his church this, tell them to do good, to do a lot of good things, to be generous and to share. That's what God wants for us, to go and do good and to be generous and to share. But why? Why did Paul say that? In this way, they take hold of what life really is. Life is not about accumulating. It's not about storing up. It's not about just meeting our own needs. It's about giving. It's about looking to others, doing good, being generous. That's what life is really about. That's what true life really is. So if you want to um, give to what God is doing in and through his church here at FCF, we invite you to go to our website or you can utilize the app or the offering boxes that are located on the walls as you exit the auditorium today. So Pastor Randy is taking a little vacation. And so I'm excited that we have Pastor Pete back again today. Now in the summer, he gave a message called The One Thing. And he just has more to say about the one thing. He didn't have enough time last time. So today we have the one thing, part two.
Well, good morning. Man, we are glad that you are here with us. My name is Pete, and I get to serve here as the associate, associate pastor. That's a new title I've just made up for myself. It's kind of a Dr. Seuss thing. Associate pastor here at FCF, and we are blessed to be here. Jess and I just realized uh, a couple days ago that we just finished celebrating our one-year anniversary of being on staff at FCF. <laughs> It's been exciting to see God doing awesome things in our church, and we're, we're pumped that we get to be a part of it. As Pastor Kim me mentioned, the last time that I spoke, if I can get some water, Brian, um, that'd be great. The last time that I spoke, we looked at Scripture holistically. We looked at w what it gives to us, the values that it contributes to our, the qualities that it adds to our life. We talked about Scripture uh, being impactful, that it was the one thing that if we allow it to, it'll change your character. It'll change your heart. It'll make you a better husband. It'll make you a better wife. It'll make you a better boss. It will change who you are drastically. Can we give it up for Brian Tedder? Isn't he awesome? <laughs> now, what you might not know, sitting there in that chair, is that this morning we came in to start our production practice, turned on the soundboard that runs all of the hundred and some channels that hit it, and it had crashed. And so our production crew has been working since we started to get that back up. And we are able to have service because of that awesome group. So if you're watching online, you can thank them in the chat. If you're watching in the room, thank them there. But I am blessed to get to work with one of the most incredible and talented group of techs in the world. So one more time for me, if you don't mind. Let's thank those gentlemen and ladies for making this happen. So... It's going to surprise some of you to find out that I was kind of a wild kid. I mean, you're seeing married with three kids, business owner, Pastor Pete. But can you imagine me as a teenager? I mean, what that was like and the crazy stuff that I did. I, I have two older brothers. Uh, I've introduced them a couple of times to you, but, but I think this is the first time we've seen pictures. This is our first family picture, entire family. Isn't it terrible? Okay. Here is, this is my uh, sister Becky. She's delightful. Mom Kathy, um, Father Bernie. This, wh which one do you think is me? Just by saying yes, you think this is me? No. I didn't say to say no. I feel emphatic about it. Is this me? No. Is this me? Yeah. <laughs> You guys think you know everything. All right. Yes, I was a lot cuter when I, uh, when I was younger, but I still managed to land Jessica, so I got that going for me. The joke is on y'all. I, I, I should also share something. My, my mom and dad are here. They just got back from missions work in Africa, and I'm thrilled. They're missionaries. Thank you so much for being here. Can you? And... Also, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and both of Jessica's sisters are also here. And can you help me welcome them? They didn't plan to come to hear me speak. They didn't even know it was happening. They are just unlucky, I suppose. But very, very thrilled to have them with us. Okay, so that's the first family picture here. Let's check out another picture. Um, this, this, is, this is, again, my family. You can see right here my sister Becky, her family. This is my eldest brother, uh, Damien, and then my other brother, Lucifer. Uh, really <laughs> wild guys. And uh, then I'm going to show you another picture here. This, this picture, as soon as I see it, memories flood back into my head. How this picture was taken and the process that led to this picture being taken, I will never forget for as long as I live. We were heading to take this picture, and mom and dad, they say, guys, the three of us were together, the three boys were alone at the house, don't be late. There's people taking pictures after us, and there's people taking pictures before us, so you need to be here in this specific time slot. Like, sure, no problem, we'll be there, we got this. So we, we get in the car uh, to drive there, and we're already about five minutes late. For this, this trip um, My brother Bernie gets in the car Turns the car on And realizes that we're low on gas But Bernie says We can make it <laughs> Do you know, what I, you know Anybody know a we can make it person You say we, we can We can make it Okay how about 
are you a make it, we can make it person? If that's you, go ahead and put your hand up. Okay, y'all are crazy, and we end up in a lot of trouble because of y'all. We didn't make it. <laughs> We're driving westbound on I-64. For our Virginia friends watching online, westbound on I-64, right around the J. Clyde Morris exit. And we're driving probably around 70, 55, 55 <laughs> miles an hour. And uh, the car putters out. Peace. Of, it was not a great car. It was a 1981 get out and give me a push hoopty. It was terrible. <laughs> and, uh, but Bernie's like, we can, my oldest brother uh, says, we, we, can, we can still fix this. We're not, the exit's right there. All we got to do is we just, we just push the car off the exit get to the gas station once we get to the gas station we'll fill it up we'll be a little bit late but mom and dad will never be the wiser so we open the doors and we're just like waiting because we were going at a very safe speed mom we we managed to we're waiting for the car to slow down so we're driving waiting for the car to slow down driving the car and my brother i think trying to be funny says go now he was joking but at the time I didn't know that. So I opened the door to the car and I hopped out. We were still doing somewhere between 25 and 30 miles per hour. Now, a very athletic human can run about 26 miles per hour. And don't get me wrong, I'm in my prime right here. I mean, this is, this is, I probably had like some uh, six pack going on there. But apparently, you don't really start at that speed, you kind of build up to it. That was my problem. Otherwise, I was good. They say that in an accident, everything slows way down. That was not my particular experience in this moment. <laughs> Things seemed to move very, very quickly. <laughs> and I was rolling down I-64. I wasn't in the car, but I see my brothers just kind of staring at each other. I can imagine like, no, what's just happened? But as I come to a stop, I look up. And I don't see brake lights. <laughs> and this is what I think happened. I think they thought, you know, he's probably beat up a little bit. He's probably not happy. After we get him kind of put back together, we're still going to have to push this car all the way to the gas station. Might as well let it coast as far as it can. <laughs> So we managed to keep this a secret for about 15 years, but I had to call my siblings and tell them the jig is up, and we're sorry. Mama, we're sorry. And Bernie said, see, Bernie, if you notice in this picture, uh, I'm going to come to the side. Bernie's not wearing, when I was rolling down the highway, my cummerbund shot off and my suspenders <laughs> shot off. This is a 100% true story. But my older brother was so nice, he let me borrow his. And then he lied to mom and dad and said that he had forgotten his at home. Bernie is also sorry, mom, and he asks for your forgiveness. <laughs> so here's the deal. Flying down the highway, it's dark. I can't see anything. I think that what I'm doing is best, but I fell because there was no light. If you are not new to faith, you will recognize this verse. Psalm 119, it's the longest chapter in the Bible. It says this, your word is a lamp to my feet and a to my path. Is it possible that there's Christians that are stumbling and falling and tripping and making bad decisions because they're not using their light? I think that our natural response to situations may not be the godly response. Look at, look at this. The Word is a guide. This is the first point I want to share with you. The Word is a guide. Proverbs 14, 12 says this. There is a way that, what's this word? Seeking. Right, to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. There's people that have evil in their heart. It's sad, but there's evil in their heart, and they set out to do evil. But that's not who this verse is written to. There's a way that seems right. 
You may think that the decisions that you are making are godly and will get you to where you want to go. But if you're not using your lamp, it only seems right. Our human response, our mammalian response, is not always the God-honoring response. The Word is a guide. I don't know if it's because I'm a musician or how God speaks to me or whatever it is, but this is what I ended up typing in reference to this point. In order for His light to guide us, we must allow His Word inside us. We, we can't be guided by a light that we don't have or a light that we don't know or a guide that we're not following. I'm constantly confused by this. There are people that want additional revelation from God, but they're not following the revelation that God has already given us. You with me? There's people that want direction from God, but they're not following the direction that He's already given us. It's just, it's, you know, this isn't you guys, but, but somebody else far, far away. God, speak to me. Read your Bible. <laughs> God, show me who you are. Make yourself real to me. I'm in the Bible. <laughs> right? God, sh tell me what I should do. Where should I start? How's about to start by reading the Bible for the love of me? Like, I... <laughs> You want another step from God, but you're not doing the step that he's already called you to. My, my kids do this. They're a little bit immature, maybe, and, and nobody in this room is spiritually immature, but maybe somebody watching online is. But I'll tell them to do something, and they'll come back, and they'll say, can we do this? And I'll say, did you do what I already told you to do? No, 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 Dad, can we ride go-karts? Have you cleaned your room? No, go away. Anybody, it's just my kids? Anybody, oh, okay, a couple other, okay. I, I'm not God, but he's saying to you this morning, do what I've already told you to do. And in case you think that, that this uh, uh, instruction from God is him just trying to lord over you or control you or like manipulate what you're, he's just got stuff for me to do because he wants, it's not that at all. I want to paint a picture for you real quick in your head. This book is truth, it's revel revelation, and it is life-changing. Is there a chance that the next season of your life will require additional revelation? Is there a chance that there is truth that you need that you will find in this book, but you are not ready for that season because you haven't read your Bible? It'd be like my kids saying, Dad, can I drive the car? I love you, but you're not ready. For, once, you, once you take your test, you get the license, and we'll work with you, and you can... But some of you want that next guy. I want you to take me here. We're going to do this. I'm going to take on the gates of hell with a water pistol. <laughs> you know, like. We got to read our Bibles. Amen? Say, the word is a guide. The word is a guide. That's good. That's good. In first service, I changed this in the middle of it. It used to say it's difficult to know God's will when you don't know God's word. And I changed it to it's impossible to know God's will when you don't know God's word. This is the guide. This is the manual. And he wants us to start here. And once we've done what he's already asked us to do, then he'll open the next door. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought to yourself, man, I just wish... I could understand what's going on. 
I just don't understand what's happening right now. This is another passage from Psalm 119. It says this. 130 says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives to the simple. Are there any parents out there that you'd say, you know what, man, I, I, I would like some wisdom. I would like some guidance. I'd like some understanding in reference to, to raising my kids. I'll put my hand up. Are there any husbands out there that you'd say, you know, I would love some wisdom. Careful. I would love some wisdom in my marital relationship. Not me and you, though, babe. We're good. I got you. Like, Okay, true story. I have no idea what she's thinking like 90% of the time. I have no idea how she takes hot wax, pours it on her leg, and rips the hair out of her body, but doesn't want to step on a spider because I don't like how it feels. I'm, I'm going to stay on this side right now because she's over there. <laughs> Is she still looking at me? Yeah, okay. He gives understanding to the simple. That's got to be our heart, got to be our desire. So you may ask, so the word is a light. Will the word reveal to me every step that I take? Because if it's just that simple, you know, the answer is no. There are times that the word will not shine a light on your path. But when it comes to, fi comes to our walk with God, trusting and following, we walk by what? Not by? Watch this. So how do we build our faith? If we need faith at times to take a step that we can't see, how do we walk by faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the? Just once, I would love to answer a phone during a service, whoever that is. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At times, the Word will illuminate your path so you can see your next step. Other times, the Word will build your faith to take the step you can't see. At times, you will have to take a step that you can't see. And when you are fully convinced, the word faith, we, we walk by faith and not by sight, is the word pistis. If you're new to FCF, maybe new to you, but if you've been at FCF for any amount of time, pistis means trust, belief. You can become so convinced and so trusting in God that you're able to take a step in his direction because you know his character, you know his nature, and you know that he will guide you. We walk by faith and not by sight. The word is a guide. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says this. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, all scripture is, what is it? Inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. This is um, a scripture often used to establish the authority of, uh, of scripture. It's a proof text, very commonly used. This word, uh, some of you already know it. It's, it's theonustos. Theos meaning God, nustos meaning breath, air, or wind. It's nustos is where we get our English word pneumatic. If you're working with like pneumatic tools, if you have an inflammation in your lungs, you would have pneumonia. There you go. Yep. The NIV translates this verse this way. All scripture is God breathed. Let's just do this real quick. This will be fun. I think all of us can use this. I'm going to do it first, then you follow me. Let's do it together. One more time. That feel good? Why is there something so special about this book? 
It's the breath of God. It is God breathed. So we've talked about scripture being bread before and how long can you go without food? 40, 80 days maybe. Me, 15 minutes max. <laughs> how long can you go without breath? Minutes. Minutes only. Second point I want to make, just, just two this morning. The word is God breathed. The word is a guide, and the word is God breathed. Remember when I was a young parent with the first kid, I was panicked, like, I don't know, 70% of the time. And you can look at me with your judgy eyes, but you probably were too. For all of the young parents there, listen, this is, this is deep philosophical advice. You ready? It'll be fine. <laughs> and all the parents said? Yeah. Okay, it's going to be fine. You ain't got to panic. It'll be all right. it, there's a lot of, right now, people all, I'm not saying there's not a virus. I'm not saying any of that. Don't send me emails. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. Just saying, whatever you do, do it in faith. You get the vaccine, get it in faith. If you don't feel like God wants you to do that, don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't get the vaccine either. If you want to email me, it's uh, R-A-D-R-A-N-D-Y-G at fcfchurch.com and send. I would go in my son's room and I would get my ear right down by the crib. I'm like, oh, he's breathing. He's good. Did it, was I the only one? That, did anybody else do that? Okay, you go in, you're like, he's... I'm like, I can't tell. We're looking at the mon See, parents, my parents didn't have this, but now we have like a screen where you could literally look at your kids. And I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, I'm like close. I'm like, Jess, can you see it? Like, is his back moving? I can't tell if his back is moving. He's not breathing. We got to go, you know. Our parents, they just <laughs> close the door. He'll cry himself to sleep. They'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm all messed up. See, because that's what happened. <laughs> but why? Why is breath important? Because breath sustains physical life in the same way his word sustains spiritual life. It is breath to our spirit. It is health to our spirit. Proverbs 4.20. Love this verse. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find it. Do we have any medical professionals? I mean, doctors, nurses, first responders, uh, ambulance drivers. I don't know. Anybody here? Who has way about us this morning? Can we thank this incredible group of people for the season they just helped us get through? You can ask any of these people. If they show up in an accident and someone has a broken leg, a broken wrist, but they're not breathing, th these two things don't matter. Because if you are not breathing, come on, what's happening? You are dying. Is it possible that there are Christians who are dying? And don't even know it? We'll come back to that in a second. I, I, uh, I grew up riding bikes. Um, this is not as common now. I think video games are more of a thing. But I grew up, anybody else, you're like, I'm not a, I rode bikes all the time. Okay, yeah, all right. So this is, this is me and my, my posse. Uh, again, my, my little sister, Becky, she's adorable. This is uh, that crazy guy. That's me and Damien and Lucifer. Again, okay. <laughs> In the story I'm going to tell you, my sister is rocking my, my bike. This is, it was a little before this picture. But this is a banana-seated Huffy. Did anybody else, by any chance, have the banana-seated Huffy? This was a fine piece of machinery. It weighed about 186,000 pounds. You could get hit by a car. You would be fine car totaled incredible piece of machinery there but it was not light we start building ramps and jumping these bikes and it starts with like a cinder block and a two, uh, two by twelve and you 
Before we know it, we got shovels and we're digging holes and making ramps and cutting notches in it. And we got kids flipping and hitting trees. It was, it was not, it, it, it wasn't, it, I thought I was Travis, Travis Pastrana, but I didn't have a foam pit. I had dirt covered in stones. If you, so one of these times we're riding bikes and I, I two older brothers, I always wanted, you know, I wanted to be like them and do what they were doing. They had real nice bikes. I had the banana seated Huffy, which was not known for its agility or bunny hopping ability. They had made this ramp that went up and had like a little dip in it, and then it went back down. So you had to have enough speed to clear the gap. You with me? So I'm, why are y'all laughing already? I didn't even tell you what happened. You know what happened. <laughs> Dang, don't it. I started pedaling as fast as my little legs would take me towards that ramp, and I'm pedaling, 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 and I get to the ramp, and I realize I hit the front of the ramp, and like the bike like decelerated, like <laughs> drastically, so as I'm climbing, I'm like, I got to do something, so I pulled up on the handlebars as hard as I could, I'm like, I got to get the wheel up so I can clear that little gap, and the handlebars pulled right out of the frame of the bike, <laughs> so at this point, it didn't much matter which direction I turned them, the bike was going to go wherever it wanted to go. So I fall in the hole, spike slams into my chest. I slide down the side of this little ramp. I'm, I can't breathe. I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. My siblings are laughing hysterically at me. They think it's the greatest thing they've ever seen in their lives. I'm like, <laughs> but I'll be honest. It was one of the first times I had the air knocked out of me, and I was panicked. I was freaking out. I think this happens to a lot of Christians. You get into a difficult situation, something goes wrong, stress enters, they can't breathe, and they panic. And listen, we don't make good decisions when we're panicked. We don't process well when we're panicked. Have you ever been to a, a location where it was maybe a little higher up, an altitude, and the air was thinner? Anybody? Yeah. You know, you're kind of, you're fatigued, and, and, and you know, you're, you don't feel great, you're kind of tired, and you, you, know, you don't move very fast, and you're certainly not at your peak intellectual state. But what happens if you stay there for a while? Anybody know? If you stay for a little while, you can actually acclimate to it a little bit. You can get used to it. This is what happens to us. Is too many Christians have adjusted or acclimated to the lack of biblical oxygen in their lives. They, they, they've just adjusted to... This is how it's going to be. I'm busy. Like, I got stuff I got to do. I don't, I, I got, I got stuff I got to do. I don't have time for this. So you, you start, maybe you started reading. Maybe the last time I spoke about this, I loved seeing all the posts on social media and people messaging me and telling me. And that's the greatest thing you can do is to feel like people are responding to what you're saying. But statistically, there's a chance that you read your Bible for two or three weeks and then you just stopped. I, I've done that before. I adjusted to the fact that it's just a little bit less spiritual oxygen in my life. There's a little less Jesus inside of me. I mean, maybe there's a chance that when we interact with Christians, or maybe, maybe I am that Christian. Maybe we are those Christians that, you know, we don't have a clear picture of what God looks like or we have immature faith or the things that come out of our mouth and the things we post on social media don't look like the things that would be attributes of a follower of Christ? Is it because there's a little less Jesus in us? There's a little less spiritual oxygen? Because even if you stay at that specific elevation, it's still not, even though you adjust, it's still not good for you. 
something else can happen. As I was talking about this message, and I was talking with a buddy, a friend named Alan, who's an air traffic controller. He's been at FCF since the high school, since way back in the day, an awesome guy. We're hanging out in my driveway talking. And uh, I wasn't trying to be morbid or anything, but I said, you know, have, have you ever, I, I love aviation. I think aviation is incredible, the physics that surround it. And so I'm talking about his job. And I said, man, have you, have you ever lost a plane? Have you ever been like navigating a plane, landing, taking off, navigating it somewhere, and, and like the plane has an accident? And he says, yeah. And I said, well, what, what happens? And he says, the most common thing that happens is something called hypoxia. Have any of you heard of this? So what hypoxia is. We need oxygen in our bodies. Mostly with not commercial planes, but smaller general aviation planes. If they get too high, or if the cockpit depressurizes, there's not enough oxygen, you start to die, but you don't even know it. You get to a place where you get a little bit confused, and he says it, it's, it's like sad. I was talking with another friend who's a pilot right between services, and some of you remember Payne Stewart. You guys remember that? This is what happened to him. Cabin depressurizes, and the air traffic controllers are telling him, you need to get, you got to get lower. You got to get some oxygen. But they watched his plane fly and fly and fly until it fell out of the sky. If the plane is low enough, it'll fly into a mountain. But there's this sense of euphoria that hits you right before you go unconscious. There's a chance that you feel okay right now. You're thinking, I feel fine. I actually feel pretty good. But you could be dying spiritually. Spiritually. Epoxy will kill you. I, I do want to do want to share something that I, I think has the potential to upset some people and that is definitely not my intention. I don't think it was the intention of Jesus either, but he did from time to time. I'm going to share something. I, I want you to stay with me. I want you to hear my heart in it. Is it possible that Scripture is a means to an end. I'm like, well, what, what do you mean by that, Pastor Pete? What if the purpose of Scripture, I mean, do, do I believe that this book is a guide? Yes. Do I believe that this book is, is breath to our spiritual body? Yes. Do I believe that it's a foundation? Yes. All of these things I believe this book will give to you. But what if there's more to it than that? What if I told you that our goal in reading the Bible was to take the Bible and look through the pages to see Jesus? That we have to get to a place where it's not just words on a page, but it's the character and the nature of God and that we look through it and see Jesus. Think about it like this. Like you have a, this present that God has given you. And it is a gift. It's an incredible gift. And you tear the paper off of it, and you look at it, and there's truth written all outside the box. Like, man, this, this box is life-changing. I mean, there's truth in here that I never would have known. And it's written all over. Man, this box is beautiful. But you never actually open the box and get to the greatest gift, that's the character and the nature of Jesus. You may be saying, I don't understand why you're making such a big deal out of this. Like, okay, I'll see Jesus, I'll look for him in the word, but what's the big deal? Is there a danger if we focus on the box? John 5, 39 says this. This is Jesus speaking to the religious leaders of his day. Most of them had memorized the entire Old Testament. 
Jesus says to them, you study the scriptures, the word, diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scripture, scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have, what's it say? So what's the, what's the danger? The danger is we can know Scripture and not know Jesus. The danger is you can have information that never turns to transformation. They had Jesus incarnate, the Word incarnate in front of them, and they hated Him, and they killed Him, and Jesus called them hypocrites. The religious leaders knew the word, they just didn't know Jesus. Man. Hypoxia is dangerous. Hypoxia will kill you. But hypocrisy is worse. This is why. Hypoxia will kill you. You ain't got enough Jesus in you. You ain't got enough air in you. God breathed. Hypocrisy will drive you to hurt or kill others in the name of religion. And for some of you in this room, or some of you watching online, you said, I'll never come back to a church again because of how those Christians treated me. I'll be honest and tell you that some of the hardest and most difficult conversations I've had, and sadly, some of the meanest people I've interacted with said that they were followers of Christ. And the sad thing is, some of you would probably say the same thing. And they get hurt, and they leave the church. And listen to me, if that's you, I'm sorry that that happened. I'm sorry that you were hurt. That's not the way of Jesus. But please don't hold Jesus responsible for the mistakes of his flawed people. And if you feel like you've been hurt and you feel like you've been broken, guess what? You're in good company because so is Jesus. Let's not suffer from hypocrisy and let's not suffer from Let's be people of the word. Let's be people that stay in the word. I, <laughs> this book means more to me than any book in the history of the world. And if it was not readily available, I would do everything in my power to get it. We see in foreign countries people fighting over a single page of truth in the Bible. My pop could tell you stories about smuggling Bibles into China and some of the crazy, crazy stuff. People weeping over finally being able to hold and read a Bible. This is valuable. But my goal in studying and reading the Bible is to see Jesus in it. If you remember all the way back at the first time I started teaching on this, the first point I made was that Jesus is the word and we must see him when we read this book I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet there's one more slide I want to show you one more thing I want you to write down or keep in your head and it's this reading the word is a step towards God Seeing God in the Word will lead you to a transformational trust in your Creator. Every single one of us needs to be taking a step towards God every single day. A step towards God. A step towards God. A step towards God. But when we start to see God in the Word, when we look at the character and the nature of Jesus, and we say, God, I, I trust you with my life. Like how you have handled the power that you have is beautiful. You made yourself vulnerable. Vulnerable. Be 
a good title for a series, I think. He made himself, he used his power. So when I see him, when I understand him, when I see him in the word, there's nothing I want to do but trust him. It changes your character. And that's what true faith conversion looks like. It's God, I trust you, and every day of my life I'm going to follow you. I'm not going to heaven because I parroted a prayer. I'm going to heaven because I trust and I follow. And I trust and I follow. Come on. That's what it's all about. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to bow your head. But I just want you to focus on yourself. One of my favorite communicators always says this, and I think it's so important. In this moment right now, what is God saying to you? Like you're going to leave and our heads already start going other places and we got to beat the Methodist, the Chick-fil-A and all this stuff. It's closed. I'm sorry. But in this moment, now y'all are hungry for Chick-fil-A. Sorry about that. My bad. But in this moment, just quiet everything else. If you need to, close your eyes and say, Father God, what are you speaking to me in this moment? What are you saying to my heart? How, how do you want me to be different? God, I trust you, and I want to follow you. You don't have to raise your hand, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm raising my hand, and I'll, I'll say, I could use more guidance. I could use more understanding. Anybody else, you'd say you could use it? You say, I, I could use more of the breath of God in my life. Anybody else join me and say, I could use more of his breath in me? It's our heart that we would get to a place where we say, God, I just want you. I want you more than anything else. And nothing is going to stop me from getting it. So I look into your word. I breathe you in. And I'm changed. Just sing it. I just want Would you sing this with us? Well, sing it out. God wanting to do part two of the one thing. I'm so glad. Thank you. And uh, Pastor Randy's still going to be on vacation next week, and so I'm going to bring a message called And Another Thing. It really is. Next week is Another Thing, okay? So if today was your first uh, Sunday at FCF, Pastor Pete is going to run to Guest Central right now, and uh, he would love to say hi to you and uh, meet you personally. So if you wouldn't mind exiting over there, we'd so appreciate that. And if you need to talk or pray with anyone today going through a difficult time, we invite you to stop by Care Central. Church, have a great day. I'm going to go celebrate my birthday. Bye-bye. <laughs>